On the 21st of January, 1931, Sir Isaac Isaacs was sworn in as the ninth Governor General of Australia. The story of how Isaacs came into this role is a snapshot of the way Australia has grown and changed throughout its history. The best way to look at what has changed is to compare it with what has stayed the same. The 1920s was a time of change throughout the British Empire. The role of Governors General had been altered at the 1926 Imperial Conference from the representative of Britain to the representative of the monarch. When the recently elected Australian Prime Minister James Scullin travelled to Britain for the 1930 Imperial Conference, he had even more changes on his mind. The Australian Governor-General had always held his post for about five years, and this was not about to change. So in 1930, a new Governor-General was required. The British monarch, King George V, was not interested in change. He wanted things to stay the same, he wanted to appoint an Englishman, and he wanted to appoint who he wanted, just as the British monarch always had. Scullin, on the other hand, wanted change. His choice of Governor-General was Isaac Isaacs. Unlike previous Governors-General, Isaacs wasn't a politician and he wasn't British. He was a judge, and more drastically, he was an Australian. The main reason why King George objected to the change is because he wanted to appoint his own choice to the role. He didn't think Scullin had any right to change the system and select the new Governor-General. But the excuses King George and his government came up with were about Isaac's nationality, arguing that, since he was Australian, he couldn't be relied upon to be impartial. This was slightly ironic, considering that many previous Governors-General had been deeply political and very biased, while Isaacs had been out of politics since he became a judge in 1906. In the end, Scullin threatened to hold a referendum on the matter, and King George was forced to back down, although not gracefully. When announcing a Governor-General, the traditional wording had been His Majesty's Pleasure. Suffice it to say, those words did not appear in the announcement for Isaacs. One thing, however, didn't change. Sir Isaac was awarded the Ninth Grand Cross of St Michael and St George, a decoration held by all the Australian Governors-General before him. Some things do remain the same.